having sold over 135 million books worldwide, international best-selling author Wilbur Smith is in Cape Town with his latest book, Desert God. We're here at his beautiful home in Constantia to explore his world and get a sneak peek at the genius behind the books. An accountant by training, Wilbur Smith became a household name chronicling the African experience of conflict and romance winning numerous literary awards along the way and becoming one of South Africa's most successful authors. Wilbur Smith, thank you so much for inviting us into your beautiful home and to your office. Is this where all the magic happens? It does, yes. It's been happening in this room for the last 40-odd uh, years. Well, it certainly is a very exciting time for you. You're celebrating your 50th anniversary as a published novelist, 36 books under your belt. What is your secret to success? To keep busy and uh, not to give up yeah. and not to fall back on your laurels or say, well, that's enough because it's never enough. I think that's what's so inspiring about you. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but your very first novel was rejected by several publishers. What was it about your belief in yourself, in your talent, that just kept you going regardless of the setbacks? It was the lady who was my agent in the UK. She contacted me and said, um, when's the next book coming? And I said, there ain't going to be a next book because I, I'm not a writer anymore. So she said, oh, you are. And uh, you will always be a writer. So get on with it. So I got on with it and I wrote When the Lion Feeds. Well, I think that the rest of the world is so happy that you were motivated to continue because you have all of these amazing works later. Let's talk about your latest book, Desert Guard. I must say, I'm about halfway through. It's exhilarating, it's exciting. But why the 20-year break between this one and River Guard? There were, there were three other books in between. Okay. So th this is the fifth book in the Taita series. Okay. And I have to wait for Taita to come and talk to me because uh, he comes in back and that's why I write the book in the, first, in the first person because he's sitting on my shoulder and telling me what happened and I have to just follow the story. Now, when I read through the pages of this book, I sense a, a deep knowledge and understanding of Egypt. Is there real love that you have for Egypt? That goes back to my childhood because my m mother was very, very excited by Howard Carter and Murad Carnarvon, who discovered Tutankhamun's uh, tomb. And um, when I was a small boy, I used to listen to the stories of, of the fabulous treasure and the, and the pharaohs. And, and uh, when I finally got my book published, When the Lion Feeds, the first place that I went to outside of southern Africa was in Egypt, and I went to all the, the monuments and the temples and up the Nile, and I kept going back there over the years. By that time, I had a pretty good idea about what Egypt was like, and I'd studied the books, and Taita came out from behind a pyramid and sat on my shoulder and said, write my story. Now, besides having traveled through Egypt, and I know uh, your love that you have for it, I'm sure that you are well-traveled, that your career has taken you to many places around the world. Is there one place that stands out to you as being your favorite, or a moment that stands out for you as being a really memorable one? Africa. Africa itself. I was born in Central Africa. I go back and revisit it all. Uh, I go on hunting safaris, well, I used to, but uh, I've discovered now that the buffalo can run faster than I can, so I've grown up hunting. I had an island in the Seychelles. That was great. Mm -hmm. And um, I had that for about 15 years. Now, Wilbur, you're 81 years young. There's something that's so amazing about you, such a youthfulness, such an exuberance, such a passion for life. How do you stay so passionate? Life is fun. It's meant to be fun. And you can make it fun by chasing after it and grabbing life by the throat and making it do what you want to do. So for any of our viewers that are sitting, watching at home, or maybe for aspiring writers who are facing an uphill battle trying to get their work published or get their work out there, what words of encouragement do you have for them? Uh, if you've got it in you, it'll come out. 
but you've got to give it a little shove. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. Mr. Wilbur Smith, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for encouraging me and inspiring a nation. You certainly are one of the most inspirational people I know. And here's to the next 50 years, right? Indeed, yes. Well, why, why limit it to 50? 70 will do me. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's been fun, fun talking to you. Thank you. Despite his age, Wilbur Smith continues to inspire and captivate the world with his incredible stories. And the Desert God is no different. Find it in your nearest bookstore and catch him at the Open Book Festival in Cape Town until the 21st of September.